In this video, I'm going to show how I normally scan a line drawing, a pen and ink drawing, or in my case here, a scratch board drawing. I'm using Epson. I have an Epson scanner. I'm using their software. Uh, you might have something different, but it should work. The principles should be about the same. So the first step is a, uh, it's a flatbed scanner. Put the artwork face down on the bed. Make sure it's lined up. You want to try to avoid having to rotate the, the artwork or file after it's been scanned. So you want to make uh, sure everything is straight. Uh, you might want to put a book or some kind of weight on top of the uh, lid of the scanner to make sure the artwork is pressed down really tight uh, to the glass bed. And once you have it on there, first thing you want to do is do a preview. The preview gives you a small version of what the image will look like. So it'll help you uh, crop in and scan just the part that you need. Grab the uh, marquee. Bring it up pretty cl close. You don't want to crop off any of the good parts of the drawing. You can always crop it tight, uh, in tighter in Photoshop later. Okay, once you have that um, set, on my uh, software, I can auto-focus on the selected part, which I'll go ahead and do. That'll make sure the line work is as sharp as possible. Now for the setting, I go ahead and use the professional mode. Like I said, your software might be different. Uh, that just gives me more options as far as um, choosing resolutions and different things like that. Uh, for the document type, I use Reflective. In other words, it's a hard copy. It's not uh, like a transparency. And document table, that's very selected. And for the type, I use Photo. If you use document, that's more like um, doing things like uh, printed pieces of paper. Uh, photo gives you more more options and for to do um, a line drawing the key thing is to scan it in grayscale you could do it in black and white but once you do it like that all your options are pretty much gone so you want to do it in 8-bit grayscale uh, you could do it in 16-bit grayscale but I think it's a little bit overkill and I always do resolution of 1200 pixels per inch. And I always scan it at the original size, which means it's the exact size that the artwork was done at. And my software, again, once it selects um, an area, it does an auto focus or an auto exposure. We'll take a look at the, take a look at the levels of that and see it moved it in. You can see uh, even though I try to use the blackest inks I can use and my uh, paper is uh, about it's very white. Apparently it's not as white as it can be. You can see here it's not pure white or pure black. So what the levels does is go ahead and tries to bring out the maximum in that. Now you can, to give you even more options, you could just reset it. You can see by resetting, if you look at the image of the tree when I do reset, it gives you a wide range. I'll look at the levels on that. And you see it has a little bit more option uh, as far as um, making more extremes in the dark and the light. Um, sometimes I do that if I think the drawing is going to be too dark. That way I'll leave the levels where the, I don't get the blast completely black. Uh, at least I'm thinking that maybe it'll lighten the dark areas, let the, let the whites be a little bit bolder by the end. But almost always I just go ahead with the auto exposure. 
You could do the unshocked mask here, but I saved that for later when I do my adjustments in Photoshop. You don't want to do any of the other uh, adjustments here, like especially you wouldn't want to do de-screening. And that's pretty much it. And then I'll do scan. Um, and I'm just going to save this one to the desktop, and I'll just use its number, numbers as an identifier. And I always save mine in TIFF. And for the format type, for the options, I use the Byte Order of Windows. And no compression. And then I scan. After the image is scanned, it's opened in Photoshop. First thing I do is rotate it so it fits upright. And now the image that we scanned is in 8-bit grayscale and eventually we wanted to get it into 1-bit. That's 1-bit would be line uh, art. In other words, 1-bit has really only black pixels. Um, you can say two colors, black and white, um, but eventually we wanted to have a 1200 pixel per inch one bit image. That would be a line art, what I would call a line art scan. So first thing is rotate it where it's upright. Um, double click on the magnifier, get it at 100%. First step is to sharpen. Use unsharp mask, use amount 500, radius 1.1 pixels, threshold level 2. This is a good starting spot and pretty much everything I scan this is what I use. Can play that. Next step is to look at it in threshold. In other words, what Threshold does, it, throws, it shows you what it's going to look like in one bit. There's no tones in it. It's solid black and solid white pixels. Uh, the default is the mid-range, which is 128. Here's another place where you could adjust it if you want. If you think the lights, these whites are going to be too tiny and fill in, you can start lightening it. If you think it's the line works are too small and they're too tiny, too thin, and they might drop out when they're printing. You can bump this up a little bit. But ideally, you've drawn the drawing exactly the way you want. And so 128 should work fine. Okay, now it looks like a one bit uh, scan right now, but it's still in grayscale. But we're going to try apply one more filter um, before we convert it to one bit. We're going to do dust and scratches to clean it up a little bit. Um, um, I do a threshold of about six on this and a radius, start with a radius of one. You can say, here's a preview of, here it is on. We can bump it up to two. It cleans it up even more. Um, I kind of try to avoid doing too much of this because I think it kind of degrades the edges of the line, like the whites. Um, it starts rounding the edges of them a little bit. Um, so normally I go with it about one. That cleans it up pretty nice. Click OK. Okay, then at that point, I change it from grayscale to bitmap. The output, um, normally, especially doing this, um, converted from grayscale to one bit, you want the output and the input to match up. So input was 1200, we want the output to be 1200. And for method, we want 50% threshold. This is for doing it a line art. Okay.
there it is, it's in one bit now. So this is a true line art scan. There are no uh, gray tones in it, so there would be no heptone if this was printed. Um, it would print as a solid, solid black. So you, okay, so you have that, but um, you can still see there's a lot of crud going on inside that. What I normally do is zoom out a little bit, and I'm not going to do all of this whole thing. First step is I find the bold, large white areas, go through and find all of them, hit uh, and fill fill those with white. Then I double click on the magnifier glass, zoom in, and I use these uh, scrolls on the window so I make sure that I go through systematically. I go through through the whole thing with the pencil tool with black and white. Um, and here's a good place where you can use the a short key uh, command, the X key, which changes from foreground to background color. So right now I have black, I want to change to white. Hit the X again, goes back to black. X again, goes back to white. So you can do that back and forth to clean it, drawing up with the pencil tool. Then I, I scroll across horizontally. Um, and really, I could spend an hour cleaning up one of my drawings. If it's a, it's a important scan, I want a good clean scan. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up all the little dirt and stuff inside uh, inside the light areas and any place where the the black has maybe had a highlight or something from the ink on it, I'll go ahead and fill those in black. And another advantage I have when I do this is if I see something that I was kind of clumsy at with the drawing or if I look at it and I say, well, I, I want a clean edge on that and I'm afraid it's not, it's going to fill in. At this point, I can go ahead and kind of redraw those shapes in. Like, um, uh, you know, I can even get a... some leaf shapes depending on how, how much I want to go go in. I, I try not to get too carried away with this, but it definitely is something that it can really, it can add more detail and more precision to the final drawing. And so basically I go through the whole drawing. One row at a time, I go down so far that I use the scroll bar Take another section, and you go from either left or right, how you want to do it. But you do it systematically so that you make sure you cover the whole thing and you've, you've looked at the whole thing and you've gotten rid of all the little imperfections. So, pretty much it. When it's done, just give it a name and save it, and that's how you do a scan for line drawing.